come back. Now the problem I'm going to do is called the potential inside of an uncharged conducting sphere and a charge outside of it. So imagine that there's a charge here, point charge, Q, and then this one is a conducting sphere, but it is initially uncharged. So what's going to happen to this situation? Uh, this is another one of those cases where a charge induces a charge on another object, such as a plate or a sphere, right? In this case, this charge Q induces a charge here, on this, since the charge is, the, since the sphere is originally uncharged, its, its net charge must be still zero at the end, but negative charge flows to this end of the sphere, so we can kind of split the sphere in half, and we can say this side of the sphere becomes negatively charged, right? And then this side of the sphere becomes positively charged, okay? Then we can say this side of the sphere has charge negative Q, uh, overall, the charge is negative Q, and then this side of the sphere, the charge is positive Q, so that the ne net charge of the sphere is going to be zero, right? So then what's going to be the uh, potential anywhere inside of the sphere? So uh, we're going to use the similar kinds of arguments that we've made before. Since this is a conductor, we're going to say the electrical field inside is zero. The electrical field inside is zero. So or, since all the charge rushes to the outside, anywhere inside the electric field must zero. Therefore, the surface of the conductor itself must be an equal potential, and everywhere inside the potential must be constant. So if we were to draw the electrical field configuration of this charge, what would it look like? Okay, uh, the electrical field will come out of the positive Q, go into the uh, negative, and then it won't penetrate inside of the sphere, right? So it's going to go like this, radially inward, come in perpendicular, and it won't penetrate inside. Go like that, come in perpendicular. Okay. And then there's an electrical field going this way. Then there's also electrical field coming out of the positive here, coming out of the positive, and then going outward being repelled by the, the charge Q here. So it looks probably something like this. So notice how the electrical field is always perpendicular to the surface. So one of the arguments we're gonna make is that the electrical field is zero in, everywhere inside. We're, the next argument is that the potential of the sphere is the same at the surface as anywhere inside. So the potential is constant. Okay, why? Because the electrical field everywhere inside is zero. So then, how do we calculate that potential? What is the potential everywhere uh, inside and on the surface? Okay, at, at first when you look at this problem, it looks like a, a difficult problem to solve because you don't know the charge distribution. You don't know how that negative Q is distributed on this side of the sphere, and you don't know how the positive Q is distributed on that side of the sphere, right? So how do you calculate the potential due to that? Well, here's what we're going to argue, okay? Look at the potential, what the potential would be at the center. The potential at the center, right? The potential at the center would be the potential created by the negative charge plus the potential created by the positive charge, plus the potential created by the, the outside charge, right? Uh, potential at the, with, due to the negative Q, plus the potential due to the Q, positive Q, plus the potential due to the point charge. But because I am exactly at the center, what can I argue, right? Uh, because I'm... Uh, symmetrically the same distance away from this negative Q as I am from the positive Q, I can argue that the potential uh, due to the negative Q and the positive Q are the same but oppositely charged, right? Opposite signs. So that I can argue that this and this cancel and make zero. So the potential due to the negative and the positive because I'm equidistant and I'm symmetric then uh, the, the two cancel, so the potential at the center is going to be equal to the potential due to the charge Q, and then that's going to equal what? KQ over the distance D from the charge Q all the way to the center. Okay? 
Therefore, I can make the argument that the potential halfway is also the same, right? The potential anywhere is equal to kq over d, including the potential at the, uh, the surface itself. So the potential at the surface is kq over d. R why? Because when the electrical field inside is zero, delta v is equal to integral e negative e dot, dot dr, right? So the potential difference between any two points inside of a conducting sphere is equal to the electrical field inside of that conducting sphere dotted into dr, right? So since the electrical field is zero, this cancels, and then we can say the potential here and here and here and here, anywhere it's the, uh, the same. So even though over here, you can kind of say, well, how could the potential there be the same as here? Aren't you closer to the negative charge? The negative charge is going to create a larger negative potential. This positive charge is going to create less of a positive, so they're not going to be able to cancel. But the potential due to the charge Q is also positive, right? So even though you're closer to the negative, the, this negative potential gets larger. The potential due to the this side, Q, gets smaller, right? But the potential due to that gets larger, right? And so in such a way, this gets larger as that it helps the, this gets larger and it helps the Q, and then together they're able to cancel the potential created by the negative charge, you see? Now if I go farther away this way, what's gonna happen? Now I'm closer to the positive charge, right? But I'm farther away from the outside positive, right? So the potential due to the outside positive charge goes down. The potential due to the inside positive goes up. And the potential due to the negative charge goes down, but in such a way that it balances out and it uh, it's also becomes the total potential becomes the same as at the center, you see? So just by the argument that the electrical field is zero inside, we can say the potential everywhere inside is going to be um, this, uh, uh, the same. What's going to happen, you think, uh, to the potential, right, if we made a plot of it as a function of the distance r, right? Imagine this is the x-axis, right? This is the x-axis, and this is potential as a function of the x-axis. So at, if we call this x equals zero, the potential is going to be kq over d, right? kq over d. And then uh, all, all the way to x equals to r, the potential is constant. And then all the way to x is negative r, the potential is also constant, right? So if we made a plot of the potential as a function of the number line, right? And then what's gonna happen as I get closer to here, right? I'm going farther, I'm getting closer to the, the positive charge, right? I'm getting farther away from, the, uh, from the, um, this positive. So the potential due to this guy is going to go down. The potential due to this guy is going to go down also. But I'm getting closer to the potential of the point charge. So this one is going to go up. So the, the distance from here to here will be D. Of course, the point charge will have a certain radius. It's not going to be uh, infinitely sized. So when you get to the the when you get to the the surface of the charge, after that the potential the will plateau, right? So it's going to go up as a function of one over r, right? Because always remember, potential is linearly proportional to the distance, and then it uh, it goes all the way up, and then when you reach this charge it is uh, plateaus, then what happens? Afterwards, the potential due to this drops and the potential due to those guys drop, right? So then you have your, uh, it goes down like this, all the way to, to infinity, proportional to one over r, okay? Then what happens as you go away from it this way? The potential of that begins to drop, the potential of this begins to drop, right? So gonna go down, proportional to one over r, and then it's gonna go down all the way to zero also, as you go. So the potential as a function of the position x looks like that here. Uh, it goes like this, it increases, it plateaus inside of the sphere, then it goes up all the way to the, the point charge, then it plateaus inside of the point charge, then it drops as one over r, okay? So it's a good, uh, 
This problem is a good problem in order for us to visualize how the charge induced by this gets distributed and how that charge creates a potential inside of it in such a way that the potential never changes and the electrical field inside is zero. So it expels all of the electrical field outside so that the inside electrical field is always zero. Okay? Thank you very much.